So we have re um, we've, we've reached the end of, a, of another Boleyn Days, the ninth Boleyn Days. We're here honouring this gentleman, uh, Professor Bart Boleyn, uh, one of the co-founders of the IPCC, um, a voice for science to society, a, a completely unique and powerful idea that we as scientists can actually speak out. Um, uh, involved in, the fir in one of the earliest numerical weather forecasts. Bert Boleyn, I never had the fortune of meeting. Um, so, uh, I know that some of you in the audience did. Uh, I regret having never met him. I'm sure he must have been a really, really inspiring person. And I would hope that he'd be proud of each and every one of you today, of what you put into these Boleyn days. What a fantastic event. I don't know how many of you sat through all of the lectures. Um, if you did, you, you will have had as a rewarding experience as I have. Um, I'm just going to share with you, as I've as become my tradition for the Boleyn days, just a few of the things I learned during the Boleyn days. And for, for background, uh, I'm a metamorphic petrologist. I work on rocks. So a lot of this is new and exciting for me, and I, and I find it really, really quite amazing, all the new things I come away with each year. Um, I learned about volcanism, uh, and not to be confused with volcanism. <laughs> um, species living tw uh, doing two generations in a year, and that climate change can push them over a threshold where it's only one. And uh, little uh, beasties like this, uh, leaf miner, can uh, live once or twice in a season. I learned about I learned a new concept about blue carbon. The first thing I heard when I heard I thought carbon isn't blue, um, <laughs> but uh, carbon deposition uh, in the near coastal environment um, that this is uh, up to an order of magnitude faster than carbon sequestration for land on land. Something I had no idea about. I learned that we can improve our understanding of glacial interglacial CO2 variations. Um, by considering variable phosphor carbon ratios in our climate models. I learned that we can use 3D seismics to look at individual rock layers deep in the North Sea and see glacial striations left by glaciers spilling out from the North Sea uh, many hundreds of thousands of years ago. I learned that cause and effect can be separated by deep time, or at least I became aware of that concept, that the things that, that, the, that we pass it forward, we pay it forward, the things we do are going to be in the geological record, read in the future, um, as to the, what we do now affects much further in the future. I learned it in a, in the, when we had these, um, the human sciences academic area, I learned people are researching on that question, something we've no doubt all thought about but uh, maybe not thought of as a concrete research question. I learned that if you um, look carefully at the hydraulics and, you st and look at hydraulic fracturing in sediments in the Arctic Ocean, we can get much better estimates of methane release um, from cathrates as they, th as they thaw or melt. I'm not sure which is the correct term if a cathrate thaws or melts, but I did learn that fracturing is really important about releasing this methane, so that sometimes the least permeable sediments are the ones doing the biggest release. I learned not to eat Arctic snow. <laughs> um, that's just about just over a pint of Arctic snow. We were told it was a pint, but uh, even as a British person, 680 mils is a good-sized pint. <laughs> um, and it's full of black carbon, probably volcanic ash and all sorts of other nasties. I learned that we have a third pole. Um, the Tibetan Himalayan plateau acting as a third pole also with enhanced global warming. Well, not global warming, local warming. I learned that um, block blockages in airflow systems can be, can be one of the causes of extreme uh, weather events. I learned uh, only a few minutes ago, um, that uh, there are basins within the uh, within Antarctica of uh, um, which contribute uh, to which contributed to uh, Pleistocene sea level rise and can contribute to future sea level rise again. 
So those were just a few glimpses of what I learned. I think I learned quite a lot more, actually, and I hope you all learn masses during the Boolean days, because this is what it's about. It's about exchange of information. It's about learning stuff outside your fields, which is why you receive an email from me in the morning reminding you to go to everybody else's sessions, uh, because it's really rewarding. And, uh, and if you didn't do it this time, for the 10th Boolean days, make sure you go to every single session. So what happens now? Well, um, I have got to keep talking for 10 minutes uh, because it's not quite 4 o'clock. But it, then it takes you 5 minutes to find your way to where we're going next. At 4 o'clock, we will have a welcome drink and we will open the new Berlin Centre photo exhibition, which will be in the Northern Hull Foyer. Now, some of you know where that is. Others of you probably don't. Um, but uh, just follow the mass flow. It's rather like diffusion. You'll get there. And we're going to go one floor up, and there we'll, we'll see some, a beautiful uh, exhibition of photos. Um, and you'll also be treated to a welcome drink. Um, you'll have a chat, about an hour to mingle um, and look at the photos. And then dinner will be served at 5 o'clock in room U1. Now, U1 is at the bottom of the building. It's like on the way out. Um, we are a lot of people. This is a very special Balloon Days. We've topped our records in all possible ways in terms of number of people, which means we're actually going to fill that the room down there entirely, and we're using a room on the side as well to, to uh, fit everyone in. So uh, the room on the side, there's a glass wall. It's like kind of like being put in a little box, like one of those smoking rooms in airports, but you're not walled in. So try and be there early, and you don't have to sit in the glass box. Um, <laughs> No, it's, uh, there's no wall around the glass box. It's not that bad. Um, but we're also, we're a lot of people, we're going to sit cosily. We're going to sit cosily together. Um, that's because we're more interested in getting all of you in there than in limiting numbers. Um, so, and uh, then you've got about two hours to eat, and I would recommend doing, uh, that you drink the odd glass of wine, because between 7 o'clock and 7.30, we'll begin a Cayley which I'll explain what that is in a minute. And uh, the Geology Society uh, will open their pub. And that's uh, very good of them. You'll, um, we will be providing wine during dinner, but of course the very, very strict representation rules are such that we cannot provide that much. Otherwise, of course, we would. Um, and, but thereafter, you can enjoy buying your beer, which you can even swish, um, for those of you who know what that means. Uh, that's the same as those people who know how to tweet. Um, you can swish money to the Geology Club if you didn't bring any cash. And do do so. Remember, you're supporting one of the oldest societies in Stockholm. Um, and uh, uh, the Cayley will probably go on for about two, two and a half hours. It'll probably begin about 7.30. Um, and around about 10, 10.30, we will close down. And you will be welcome to stay if you want to tidy up. Otherwise, you'll be thrown out. So Cayley. All right. I've explained this for several Boleyn days, and many of you are now experts. Uh, it's a Gallic word. Um, the approximate translation is social gathering with dance and music, which is quite a lot to get in that small word. Um, it's about participating and having fun, and it is strictly not about getting it right. Uh, though, if you actually are an experienced Cayley dancer, you're not welcome. Uh, this is a, uh, the best Cayleys where I come from are when a grandmothers dance with their four-year-old ch child. That's what it's about. It's not about perfection. And because we're not grandmothers with our four-year-old child, you'll find it slightly easier after a couple of glasses of wine or beer. I wish you good luck. To help you, um, a couple of years ago, we sent some representatives of the Berlin Center over to the island of Isla, where they did some proper training. And those experts, will you can see some of them here. I don't know if you recognize you. The, some of them are in the audience. They'll be the ones hiding under the chairs at the moment. Uh, they will, of course, be demonstrating the dances for you. Um, I need you to understand a few instructions which are impossible to tell you after you've had several glasses of wine. So you will listen to them now. And this is how you organize yourself for a dance. Because if you think you're not going to dance, you're wrong. Um, <laughs> There's a, a group of dancers which take the same form, things um, strip the willow form. And in this case, you're in a set of eight. And that's going to be a man opposite a lady, four of them. And there'll be a caller that will be me shouting at you. I'll be wearing a kilt by then. I'll be easy to recognize. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I mean by a set of eight. It's really handy if you so imprint that image in your mind. 
Four guys, four ladies opposite each other. That's not so difficult. Um, the second type is a, a, a dance designed in Scotland for those people who may, uh, to help you meet people. It's a sort of Boleyn dance. It's like building contacts because it's designed for a, um, a man can have two ladies or a lady can have two men. And that sort of does develop new, more complicated relationships. Um, this is a, this, people will move around the room in a ring. The caller will be standing in the middle by the pillar. And in, th in sets of three, you will make a ring and I want you to envisage this as the spokes of a wheel, like a bicycle wheel. So when I stand there saying spokes of a wheel and you've forgotten what that means, you're all going to be in sort of lines with the, with, if you imagine that the collar is in the middle of a circle and you're a line going out from that circle. I should think that uh, at least the uh, dynamic, uh, the, the uh, atmospheric dynamicists should manage that one. They're good at that, all these lines on um, flow lines. Um, it will be cyclonically. Uh, now that was actually a test of my knowledge of atmospheric circulation. You, can, uh, you will correct me if I'm wrong when we do the dances. And the last type, we, uh, sorry, not the last type, the reels, if we do a reel like the eight and I'm not sure what we do, I always do the spontaneous in the evening depending on how you, what you're looking like, um, is a ring. And that will be man, lady, man, lady, man, lady. And that's sort of fairly obvious to work out as well. Um, and there'll be a collar. There may be many of those rings. Um, dances like the Gay Gordons are the easy, easiest to organize. You're just in pairs and you're moving around the room in a large circle. However, they're usually chaotic, so I tend to avoid them um, because people run into each other and get hurt from things like that. Um, so that is your Kaylee instructions. After that, uh, you, I'll expect you all to be up and dancing after you've had some food. And I've managed to get through five of those minutes. But now we come to a really important part, is we're going to um, announce the winners of the best student poster competition. Uh, you have selected these winners yourselves. Um, you you cast your votes. Uh, looking at the posters, you wrote uh, in the numbered posters, which were, either, which were student posters, either PhD or MSc. We counted up the scores. And, we're, um, and uh, we're now going to report back your votes. We will begin in uh, third place. We have poster number two, Evelyn Decker, nudging the Arctic Ocean to quantify sea ice feedback. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations, Evelyn. And, and Evelyn will receive 5,000 kroner in research money, which she'll get. Um, she, she can contact us later as to how to, how to get hold of that. Congratulations, yeah, Evelyn. Um, and you can wear that balloon top with pride. Mm -hmm. We're going to move to number two. Number, uh, the, se um, the second person, the, the second place will receive 10,000 kroner in research money. Um, and this is Pio Rasmussen. with multi-scale patterns and drivers of AM fungal communities. Congratulations. Well done. And now, um, the first uh, prize for this year's uh, Berlin Centre for Climate Research Best, Best Student Poster Competition goes to poster number 11. Caroline Graser. Congratulations. Congratulations. There were a lo loads of super posters out there, um, and as, um, uh, so it was uh, really rewarding to go and look look round look round them. And special congratulations to our three winners. Um, so just a couple more things to say. Um, yep, two minutes left, doing just fine here. Um, the th first thing is to announce a date for your calendars, um, and that is Pathways to Collaborative Research 
on climate between the Boleyn Centre and the Human Science Academic Area. We had a session during these deep Boleyn days from the Human Science Academic Area. I hope a lot of uh, those of you who were there were inspired and those of you who were not there wish that you were there. Um, we're making it easy for you scheduling wise. We're putting on a day you're not going to be able to forget. It's Ali Yartan's day, St. Valentine's Day. So you're going to come and bring roses for the Human Science Academic Area and show that we really like them. Um, this is going to be a, a this will be a super occasion to discuss collaborative projects. We do have some funds, and what one of our main purpose one of our purposes there is to discuss how can we use those funds in an effective way to sim stimulate collaborative re research. Um, I think after just hearing an hour of listening to the um, uh, scientists, uh, uh, human scientists discussing climate, there's a lot of openings there. So hope you will be there. And then, oh. yeah, and it's one million that we have, so uh, that might be some uh, something that can catch some interest also. And if you don't come, we'll spend it all. Yes. <laughs> um, so uh, now, from uh, from all of us, it's uh, welcome back to the tenth Balloon Days in 2018. Thank you very much. <laughs>